continuing our debate on the most contentious law in the history of India, that's the Uniform Civil Code. Well, weeks after Prime Minister Narendra Modi made a pitch for Uniform Civil Code, on Thursday, Kerala, Chief Minister Pinare Vijayan accused the Congress of resorting to escapist tactics by sidestepping from taking a transparent and unambiguous position on the Uniform Civil Code. Mr. Vijayan also said that the Congress had yet to shed its bevilance on the centre's move to trample on the personal laws governing Muslims, marriage, divorce, adoption, inheritance and charity. He further said that Congress is hesitant to take a stand against the Sankh Parivar on matters impacting the nation's integrity and fighting the BJP in electoral politics. Now, it is pertinent to note that Vijayan's statement comes at a time when the chorus for the opposition unity is growing. Well, according to this piece of breaking input, former Vice President of India, M. Venkaya Naidu, bats for UCC, says, I quote, India needs a uniform civil code. The country's progress towards a social harmony, economic and gender justice has been hampered by the absence of a uniform civil code. He further said, it would be accurate to say that the absence of a uniform civil code has only served to perpetuate inequalities and inconsistencies in a land of rich diversity. In fact, this has been a hindrance in the nation's progress towards social harmony, economic and gender justice. Now, this comes after the All India Muslim Personal Board wrote to the Law Commission uh, raising objections against any proposal on the UCC. Now, joining me on the broadcast is Payal Mehta. Uh, a very good morning, Payal. What more details uh, are you getting for us? Uh, well, this is a very important piece of news that's actually coming in because mm -hmm. the former vice president of the country and the former uh, minister in the Modi government. Remember, Benkai Nadu served as a minister in the Modi government as the urban development minister, as the information and broadcasting minister. He's come out and said that India is a land of many diversities. India is a land of many beliefs and many faiths and many religions as well. And in the absence of a uniform law, it's only bringing in inconsistency. It's only helping in hinder the progress as far as social harmony is concerned, gender justice is being impacted. So here he is, he's batting for the Uniform Civil Code. Now this comes in exactly after a couple of days ago when the sitting vice president, the present day vice president of India, Jagdeep Dhankar has also said a similar thing. They've also quoted B.R. Ambedkar and his, uh, and his principles. They've quoted the assembly uh, 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 debates. They've also spoken about the fact that this is enshrined in the constitution. And that's one of the reasons when the prime minister has spoken about this entire issue. Everybody needs to come together to work for a uniform civil code. The intent of the BJP and the intent of the RSA has been, has been articulated in as many words uh, by the Prime Minister and you know, when the Prime Minister spoke in Bhopal on the 27th. And we only see more and more voices uh, either joining in or probably objecting as far as this is concerned. Even the political parties, exactly as opposed to, are still waiting to take an exact stand as far as the UCC is concerned. All right, Pallavi. Uh, well, we have a mixed bag of reactions from the opposition on uh, the UCC's proposal. What are the key arguments that are favoring the in implementation of this uh, one nation, one law scenario? Well, what people are, being, uh, are saying is that, you know, in a family, when you have one family, you can't have two different laws as well. It's going to help in uh, empowering uh, gender justice. It's going to help in empowering the social fabric of the country. This is something which is enshrined in the Constitution in Article 44, and that's one of the reasons it should be done. There is nothing unconstitutional about it. It's what, uh, it's, uh, what, what it is, is being said in favor as far as the UCC is concerned. That's the argument of many leaders, including the government. Uh, but, of course, there is objection from uh, various political parties. People are saying as to why the government is bringing this particular bill. What is the intent? Uh, why is there so much of a hurry? Is it because it's election season? And what about the rights and privileges of tribals, the northeast states, and several other people? Now, there is an objection about this uh, in probably the Sikh community also in a big way as well. That's something of, that is a fear that is also being allayed by this, uh, expressed by the Sikh, Sikh parties as well. So it's going to be important to see how these fears are allayed before the uh, bill actually comes in, even though the Law Commission is currently seeking um, suggestions from people, is seeking uh, uh, feedback from people, and that is going to close on the 13th of uh, July. We'll have to wait and see what really goes forward from there on. Well, thank you so much, Payal, for joining us on the broadcast and giving us all the latest inputs on this debate. Well, moving on, let's take a look at what some of the political reactions on the UCC debate. 
یو سی سی ایک اہم مدہ ہے مسلمانوں کی شریعت سے ٹکرانے والا اگر یہ ٹکرا رہا ہے تو یقیناً ہے کہیں نہ کہیں ہندوستان کے مسلمانوں کی دل شکنی ہو رہی ہے لیکن بات جب تک ابھی تک ڈرافٹ نہیں آیا ہے یا اس کے اندر مسودے میں کیا تبدیلیاں ہونی ہیں کیا بدلاؤ ہونا ہے اس کے بارے میں ابھی ڈومین میں پبلک ڈومین میں کچھ بھی نہیں ڈالا گیا ہے تو اس سے پہلے وابلہ کھڑا کرنا مجھے نہیں لگتا ہے کہ بہت زیادہ ضروری ہے یہ لیکن تازہ صورتحال یہ ہے کہ ہمیں سب سے پہلے اس ڈرافٹ کا انتظار کرنا چاہیے Can you tell us, uh, tell the viewers as to what is your official stand in this entire matter? Okay, basically, we have submitted our uh, official stand to Law Commission, which has asked all of us to submit their opinion. The first of uh, the thing is that we have raised the issue, the last Law Commission, which has deliberated with us also for two times, and we have submitted our recommendation to the 21st Law Commission. And after the conclusion of the law, after after concluding the entire debate, the law commission came to uh, the conclusion that the uniform civil code is neither desirable nor necessary. What went wrong? Why this law, the 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 the, 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 the law commission, 22nd law commission, came, once again came with this question: What is your opinion on uniform civil code? Although the previous law commission has raised specific issues, they asked us various matters regarding. Muslim personal law, and we have submitted our our, our report, our recommendations, and the, the 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 this this law commission has just simply asked, what is your opinion? So I am saying that, uh, and it, it means it seems that they are they are conducting a referendum, either you say yes or you say no. This is not the way the law is made. Constitution itself, Article 371 A and Article 317 G, the tribals were given exemptions from uniform civil code or from any other. law which has been enacted by the parliament so uh, and 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 the civil laws for example ipc crpc differ state to state there is no uniformity throughout the country even the consular law is not applicable throughout the country even the uh, even in goa we have a different law so to say that the constitution mean uniform civil code and constitution want a uniform law this is not correct now we are meeting the political party also we met uh, uh, shad pawar ji we met udav thakre ji we met yesterday we met kharge ji and we are having uh, we, there are proposal that we, we will also meet uh, our rashtrapati ji and we also we will try to meet uh, pradhan mantri ji also